When Formula One teams first received the first circuit diagrams of this new racetrack on the shores of the Red Sea in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, it looked to everybody like this was going to be an extremely far circuit, over 70% of the lap spent at full throttle. And to Craig and I, that meant we expected to see Monza levels of downforce on the cars. But that's not what we've seen in free practice, is it? No. Uh, again, we were all guessing uh, it would be very Monza style, as you say, even more wide open throttle here than any other circuit. It's quite incredible, but that's because of the straights. But there are bends here, and I think this is where the balance is coming in here. Yeah, absolutely. And just take a look at uh, some of the wing packages we've seen on the cars. Here we've got the Mercedes, and they've gone for their single rear wing support, that central pillar, which is to reduce drag. And we've seen that at a number of circuits. Sometimes then they swap and change between the two drivers, but both drivers running that single rear wing support. And that's sort of what we expected to see. But the wing angle itself is much steeper than what we expected. Yeah, very much so. You can see this is very much a kind of a medium downforce, medium to high, certainly not in the Monza range that we were expecting. Um, so, yeah, a lot more drag being produced here than you would expect on a circuit where is, you know, so much flat out running. And that medium downforce level means that Red Bull have brought along their medium downforce wing. And why that is significant, you can see in the centre of the wing here, that little patch underneath the N of Honda, that is a repair that the team have had to make to that rear wing after the failures they experienced in Mexico City, in Brazil, in Qatar, with that top element fluttering on the DRS. And you can't see it in this image, but on the underside of the wing in the center of the N of Honda, there's a little bit of tape keeping it all together. So Craig, this medium downforce wing for Red Bull has been a bit of a problem. We're gonna see it reoccurring, those issues? Uh, that's totally unpredictable. It could happen. Uh, there's bumps around the Jeddah track. But what they've done is, when this opens with DRS, this little section here, you can see where they've got the reinforcement and the, the slot gap separated just here. That's called the snubber, and that rests up on the DRS pod when DRS is open. They've played about with that a lot, and they got it solved eventually in different ways uh, at the last race, but I think they've probably got that fixed for now unless there is some other imbalance that's coming into the system here this weekend. Now the wings on the cars will largely have come from the last race in Qatar, but some teams would have brought some components back to the factories, modified them and brought them back to the circuits. I saw Mercedes bringing back a bunch of wings to their so-called wing world on the flight back from Brazil, for example. So there's a bit of chopping and changing, but we do know that some of the wings have definitely come from previous races. And this was very obvious to see in a very un-McLaren-like moment that you spotted earlier on, Craig. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the silliest of things, but it's the level of dust and sand that are resting on this wing that it hasn't been wiped down before appearing for scrutineering on Thursday. It's quite unusual for any team, but it's a team with the history of being so neat and prim and proper as McLaren. It was a bit of a surprise, but no real impact to the real world. Yeah, I can't imagine Ron <laughs> Dennis would have ever have stood for that. You can see the fingerprints and stuff on it. But as we look through the rest of the field, everybody else seems to be going for these medium downforce wing levels. And I think that's probably down to a little bit of uncertainty about the track, the grip level, brand new circuit, recently laid. I mean, the asphalt was only just drying over the last few days and they've only just cleaned it up in the last few days as well. So they expect to be quite dusty, quite dirty. So they need to get a bit more downforce than perhaps the track diagram would suggest of a high speed circuit. But I do wonder, as the track rubbers in, as the speeds build up over the race weekend, are we going to start to see what we are we more expected of these Monza re specification rear wings? I mean, I won't be surprised to see some people experimenting. Certainly when we come back here again, I think the teams will be ready for something like this because they'll have the confidence in what the circuit setup is. But yeah, this is a Monza rear wing. You can just see it immediately, just the lack of depth uh, in that wing. Uh, really reducing its downforce, but critically reducing its drag, which gives you that top speed advantage. Exactly, and that drag reduction and the level of re reduction of the level of force across those wing elements mean that actually there's two specifications of DRS pod that are homolo homologated for each of these cars. There's a low drag specification or low downforce specification and the high downforce specification, which are typically used on the medium and high downforce wings. But the low downforce specification DRS actuator is what you may see if anybody's brave enough to opt for Omonza specification wings. But the one thing that's very different about this Saudi Arabian circuit to say Spa, very long straights, or Monza, which is all straights with a few corners, 
is that the Saudi Arabian circuit has a huge number of corners. I think it's 27 corners in mm. total, though I'm not sure I count a corner quite in the same <laughs> way as the track designer does. There's still a lot of twiddly bits all the way around the track, though most of them at fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh gear. So it's not a big slowdown like you see at Monaco. And that means you're not gonna see the big wings that you see at Monaco, starting here with the Red Bull. So yeah, classic uh, Monaco wing. You're making the most of the box available in which you can fit that wing to get the biggest possible angle of attack you've got there. You've got a huge gurney running along the back of the wing, which keeps the airflow attached because it's so steep, so aggressive. And as you'll see here, teams also run the T-wing in order to just get the maximum downforce because drag really doesn't matter at, at Monaco. Obviously, that's the payoff you have from other circuits. You can afford the drag here. Certainly in Jeddah, teams can't afford quite so much drag. Yeah, and, that, and these big, it's a very drag sensitive circuit in Saudi Arabia. So these mm. big wings that you see on the cars generate a lot of that drag, but a lot of downforce. That's not what you want on those high speed sections. And there's, because there's no real low speed sections, even the slowest corner on the Saudi Arabian circuit is banked, that keeps the speeds up. But the forces across the rear wings are something that have been of interest all season long. And you saw, the result of some of those forces, you can see those little uh, gurneys across the rear wing of the Alpine there. Mm. They, we saw them fall off the Red Bull in Mexico City on the medium downfall specification, though that was due to a vibration through the transmission. The wings in Saudi Arabia running at high speed with a medium downforce wing, that means the forces across the wing elements are going to be absolutely enormous. And that's not the only forces they're going to be exposed to, is it? No, um, as after all the talk of rear wings over the past few races, rear wing testing, flexing, you know, question marks over legality have been clarified by the FIA and so far it seems to have been closing all of the arguments off. Now, we've spoken a lot about rear wings and this is all about the problem that you have is that rear wings are great to give you downforce, but they create a lot of drag and the drag is formed at these tip vortices, which you see as vapor trails on slightly damp days. That's creating all of the drag. So what the teams want to do is once the car's going fast enough that it's creating enough downforce even without the rear wing working to have enough grip, they want to do something to stop that rear wing working to get rid of the drag. And what they have been doing over many years, many decades even, going back to the early 90s where it caused some huge accidents at the time, flexing the rear wing. Now, there's effectively four ways that you can play about with the rear wing. One has been banned completely, so something like the F-duct, where you're blowing a slot in the wing to uh, make it stall. Then you've got flexing, so there's various ways you can do that. So the main way teams have done in the past is to try and flex the whole wing backwards under load, and that reduces the angle of attack of the rear wing. So what they have is a FIA load test where they pull the rear wing backwards from the flap to see if the flap moves or if the entire wing assembly moves. This was the test that was updated earlier this year when Mercedes were complaining about Red Bull's wing. So that's one way you can do it and that seems to be wrapped up fairly tightly now. It certainly is and these tests really date back to about 1999 when there was a lot of accusations and allegations flying around the paddock and I think the, the <laughs> heritage footage will show that the Ferrari probably had a bit of a bendy rear wing on. Now what a lot of people think, well is it a bit of rubber mounting down at the bottom of the end plate or something on the wing support? Actually no, in modern, mm. in modern times it's actually to do with the layup of the carbon fibre. It's really quite clever how the teams make different aerodynamic components flex at speed and it's not a question that's really simple saying flexible wings are banned which you could argue that the regulations do say, but not quite, because every wing is going to flex unless you make it super rigid, which means it's brittle and very heavy. Mm -hmm. So the question is really, how much flex is allowed? And that's what these tests are in going into. Yeah, so you've got to be careful. You can't put point loads on these wings because obviously they used to, with the aerodynamic loads, spread smoothly over the entire surface of the wing. So when you just get some weights and pull in a certain area of the wing, you know, potentially could break with some of the forces. They are relatively low compared with the forces that you would see on track. But it's done by the FAA. So bending the wing is the first way, but there is a third way which teams can play with. So if we have a look here. So in between the main plane and the flap, you have what's known as the slot gap. Now that is there to introduce some of the high pressure air above the wing to push it up under the flap, keeps all the airflow attached, even though it does cost a little bit of downforce in some ways, but it makes the whole wing far more efficient. So all the wings have this. 
Now, if you play around with the size of that slot gap, you can again stall the rear wing and lose all of the induced drag created by these tip vortices. So already there's regulations to try and stop this. It has to be between 10 and 15 millimeters wide, very similar to what we were talking about with the DRS needs to be 85 millimeters. So what you have around the wing is what's known as a slot gap separator. And that means that that gap shouldn't close up to anything less than that 10 to 15 millimeters already. So it's very hard to close that gap down uh, with flexing of elements, especially with the test that you've got. However, you can open that gap up potentially. And what the suggestion is, is if you bend the rear edge of the main plane, something that teams were doing many years ago, I can actually remember it was one of the first of these caught on by an onboard camera. Patrick Head from Williams saw it and you see him storming off in the garage blaming another team who I won't mention today. Um, so if you can flex this area, then you're going to get an advantage. But there's one test already in place, and we can show you where that direction that test, that actually pulls that trailing edge of that wing down in a very similar way to what you had there. But as you say, carbon fiber, it's a very clever material. It's almost like wood. It's got a grain or anisotropic, if you want to use the technical term. So it's strong in some directions, not in other. You can actually engineer it to meet this test, but still flex because the load you get on the circuit is a mixture of downward and rearward from the downforce and the drag effect. So there's been a new test introduced at the last race, which we can show you now. Again, the main plane training edge is now pulled backwards. So it's being pulled in both directions in different tests. And this should prevent any unwanted flexibility or intentional flexibility in this area. So far, everybody's teams have passed the test and people would argue that this argument is now over. It never is. There's lots of other ways you can play about with clever stuff here. Yeah, the rear wing argument, I don't think it'll ever end in Formula One. Even <laughs> next year with the new regulations, I think there's still going to be some gains to be had, but much harder with those new shaped outer rolled edges on the 2022 car. One thing I would say about these tests is obviously testing a car when it's static in, a, in the FI garage at the end of the pit lane is very different to what, how the wing will perform in a dynamic environment when it's driving around the track. The, the speeds build up gradually as a car drives around the track, which means the loads build up gradually. That means that actually when you're putting a direct load on a wing, suddenly those composites may react slightly differently to the way they do in reality. So it's always going to be this test between the rule makers and, well, I won't say the rule breakers, but the teams who are trying to make the best out of the technical regulations. Will this argument continue for the rest of the season? Probably. Will it continue into 2022? I'm pretty certain it will. And I'm looking forward to it.